Alright guys, um, welcome to our final video of building our rig. Uh, this is a final review and kind of just talking about what we've done and uh, any comments or feedback we have. Um, so here's the finished product. Let's take a look at it. Definitely looks awesome. Um, let's take a look on the side. We got the fan going on the side, the clear case. Let me shine a little, I'll shine some light on in a second, this is the back of it. Can't really see that well, but we got the backing fan, everything plugged in. There it is with light. You can see the tubes in there, and we'll get into the interior of this in a second. Very nice. We got our two monitors up here. running nice and smooth. Let me turn off the lights real quick. So this is how it looks with the lights off. It is definitely running very quiet which is awesome. And let me show you the the fan controller, the touch screen worked out very well. Nice and quiet. And what I like about it a lot is that you see I have it set on uh, fan one, which is currently in 40%. If, if you can see this, let me see if I can turn it all the way down. I just turned it off. Let me do actually fan two. So let me let me click on fan two. So you can see it as I'm turning it off. There we go. See, so go all the way to zero percent. Turns it all the way off. And I can go ahead and uh, turn it back on, crank it up. We got our water cooling um, radiator right here can turn that up with this knob see it makes a little bit more noise so we've successfully uh, connected every fan on this case which includes the two up front one on the side and two in the back um, to the fan controller works very nice uh, very nicely I like it a lot um, and yes the lights are pretty dim on the fans but again, as I mentioned earlier in the review uh, of our review of the case, the fans themselves have tinted glass on the uh, fan blades, so that's probably why you're getting a dim um, look. It's not the LED. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at inside. All right, taking a peek on the inside, you see that we installed the uh, the tube successfully. Again, out of this tank, we got one first running into the second chip, out of the second chip running into the first chip or the one closer to the uh, reservoir and the pump and then out of that going back into the uh, cooling system. Um, you see we performed, I did some cable management, not the prettiest thing but it's much better than what it was before. I had wires all over the place and the other side of this case definitely allowed me to uh, tuck a lot of the cables in. Um, you see that we got our 24 gigs of memory installed. Uh, all the slots worked, they're recognized. Finally, and I'll tell you in a second, the uh, issue that I had uh, initially, we got our hard drive, again the dual bay cooling system, we got our fan controller, you can see that from here, there's a lot of wires tucked in there, and of course, our DVD ROM. We got our top um, USB 3.0s, and those work, and what I had to do if you look at back here, let me shine the light on a little bit better. Basically, had to wrap them um, around the case from the outside and plug them into the back of the motherboard, but they work successfully. Uh, make sure you install the drivers when you do that. Um, now, there was an issue with the memory initially, and this was pretty weird. And I did some research on forums on the internet, but basically, uh, when I first turned it on and then did a bunch of cable management the memory wasn't all recognized. I was only getting um, 16 gigabytes instead of 24 and what I found out that for this uh, uh, EVGA SR2 motherboard if it's 
um, screw too tightly to the case um, or you know if it if it bends a little bit um, there may be a chance that your all of your memory won't be recognized and that's exactly what happened it was kind of weird so then what I did I took off about three screws mainly from the middle um, and the bottom and then boom you know everything was recognized working fine so basically right now I only have one at the top one at the bottom basically one in each corner and that should be enough uh, you know I mean it's screwed tightly to the motherboard there's no issues there but uh, that was a weird thing um, that I had to go through it took a, a few hours to figure out um, but everything else is working now video cards in there if you notice at the bottom if you can see that we also installed the uh, Firewire PCI Express card you see that the motherboard itself has a nice LED um, temperature gauge which is also useful not only that but it gives you um, a lot a lot of other um, notifications that you can look up in the manual but basically when things go wrong um, with the computer you can diagnose the problem a lot quicker because you have that LED um, notification window there so let's quickly look at the monitor I got my CPU uh, Z thing installed the software so you know we're looking at the processors right now um, they're running at the core speed of 1598 megahertz you know they're rated at 2.4 but I'm definitely going to be overclocking this you notice that the uh, motherboard came with a it's called the EVGA E L E T tuning utility and this thing is actually going to let me overclock the chips uh, I'm sorry the processors uh, you can also do this through the BIOS of this motherboard um, but I'm definitely going to do that and we'll probably put up a video in a couple of weeks once I get some time to play with this thing go to the other screen we notice that we do have our 24 cores recognized and that is because Windows um, recognizes the hyper threading technology on these processors so instead of showing 12 actual processors and two physical which is what we have installed it's showing 24 and all the other software has recognized it as well um, let me show you that right now alright so let's take a look at some of these uh, programs that I'm going to be using on this rig and the reason I pretty much built it this is why I love it already look at this I got Pro Tools open Pro Tools 10 with uh, Adobe After Effects CS 5.5 and it idled the it's only at 30 percent at, at the most like 20 you know 25 to 30 uh, percent processing being used which is awesome um, and they're not even overclocked yet again let's take a look at Pro Tools real quick you see uh, right now I have a session open at 192 kilohertz and 32-bit float which is a new feature in Pro Tools 10 but you see we got it at the maximum um, delay compensation is on there Pro Tools 10 does recognize all 24 processors which I can't wait to use them. The uh, last time I used Pro Tools, till my 10 on my other computer I only recognized four processors. So this thing is definitely going to be a beast, um, you know. And this is mainly what I'm going to be using it for. All right, looking at the video card from a different perspective, um, we installed CPU Z, and we see that uh, this is the reading we're getting so far from the card. You, um, so another thing to consider is the core speed on um, the shaders and memory depending on the applications you're running you know definitely do some research on that you see when I switch this to 3D application uh, the numbers change and the EVGA utility that came with the motherboard which allows me to overclock the processors also has this utility um, for the EVGA card I haven't really activated this I'm gonna have to figure out how to overclock it but I am going to be planning on doing that um, you know, so again, all these different factors, keep in mind, can make a difference. You know, again, your uh, bandwidth or the bit interface for the memory is important because that's your throughput. It's basically how fast the processor or the GPU can access uh, the memory and vice versa, how, um, how fast you can send um, information from the memory to be processed by the GPU, you know, so... Uh, for some uh, video editing heavy applications you may need a wider um, bit interface and you know if you're a gamer uh, think about the resolution you're running your games on um, you know sometimes if you're doing something crazy you got three monitors going three cards uh, running them all at like the highest resolution possible you may need a lot more memory you may need like three gigs and also a uh, 
you know a GPU that will handle that together so consider all these factors do do a reasonable amount of research because these cards can get expensive again this one was only 270 but uh, you can get some cards that are upwards you know a thousand dollars so you know again make the right choice when you're doing this there's so much information out there on the internet great forums a lot of people willing to help with great information hopefully uh, this video helps you with uh, some of those decisions as well uh, this little video that I've been working on a little music video um, for Miss Minx you can check that out if you like on uh, youtube.com slash Miss Minx music took me about two hours to put together um, but you know I'm not that good with After Effects yet um, but last time I used it on another video it took me six hours just because of the preview and rendering and the processing this thing was like ten times faster when I rendered um, any little portion of the video trying to match it up to the WAV file so if you want to see that video it's a cool video check it out but the last thing that we did promise you in the first video when we started building this is showing you how to properly calculate um, all the you know the wattage of the system or the, the the draw basically it's called the thermal design power of all these components to make sure you get the right power supply so just off the top of my head I'm gonna mention some of these numbers and on the screen I'm gonna kinda add them up for you kinda like a little math equation that lets you know that we're good to go you know so starting with the, the motherboard and the motherboard mainly depends on what's installed in it uh, in terms of memory and the chips and all that um, but they say it's a power sucker f as far as the SR2 goes but you know again it depends what you have in there but let's take a look um, I would assume that the motherboard at the tops may draw like 250 um, watts of power uh, you know with a lot of things installed in it and then we got the chips or right, how about this let's let's put the motherboard at 200 even um, each processor is an 80 watt uh, rated 6 core processor so you add those two together uh, the memory is not going to draw that much power at all out of it because it's part of the 200 in the motherboard. Uh, the video card, if you watch my other video on the video card, we mentioned at the most is going to draw 250 watts of power, and that's when it's really being pushed and overclocked. So we're good to go on that. Um, the water cooling uh, component, basically, on, on in the directions or the manual, it said that at the most is going to draw 200 watts of power if it's really, really cranked up and the chips are really, uh, you know, working hard. Um, so we add that hard drive. You know, is going to be minimal. Let's 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 put the hard drive and the other peripheral components, the fan controller, the CD drive, and all the fans included in this at uh, another 150. Um, you know, and again, they could vary from anywhere from 50 to 150, depending on how hard they're being driven. So you add all those up, and you see that with a thousand uh, watt power supply, we're definitely good to go we can even push this thing now luckily we do have a space at the top for a second power supply which I would probably only install if I'm getting another video card for example or once I upgrade to Pro Tools HDX um, they have these new PCI cards which are going to draw a bit more power so I was thinking I would get another power supply just to power that uh, card itself um, but again plenty of space in this case uh, I could probably install which I will down the line most likely more um, more radiators for cooling and perhaps you know thing about cooling this north bridge or south bridge of the motherboard um, processing and then maybe the video card but again let's take a last look at the computer running very satisfied two monitors up um, hopefully you guys enjoy the series of these videos again check out all the other parts um, we go into each component of the computer unboxing review installation and so forth check out the first video kind of telling you what we're going to put into this thing but uh, leave comments let us know what you think and we'll see you next time